What is good? We're back. We got the UW faithful bow down to him. <laughs> Big D back in the house. Yeah, I don't, up, I don't use that. I know that's the slogan, but uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what up, man? Representing the West Coast, coming coming live from a exciting uh, exciting day. A random random mm. exciting day in the off season. You know? Gotta yeah. love it. I'm glad this didn't happen a couple days ago because it'd be hard to prove was it true, was it not on April first. Right, but, right. You know, we're don't we're even April open for today, so. Don't even open anything on that day. So, yeah, uh, but like you said, today we had some some fun news break. It seemed like it was maybe kind of undertoning, like is it, it's trending towards maybe something might happen there. Um, not because of social media stuff, but it just seemed like it was trending that way. A lot, a lot of people scrubbed their Instagram of whatever. And he was s- sending he posted a waving by picture or whatever. Um, but Stefan Diggs gets traded for a 2025 second round pick and also sending a 2024 sixth round pick as long as well as a 2025 fifth round pick uh, to Houston for uh, digs. So that is interesting, right? Uh, yeah. What, you know, the Texans don't seem like a team that just make a move to make a move. They're not that dynasty you know, trader who's just out there sending stuff. And if well, something sticks, something sticks, you know? Yeah. Not that now that Bill O'Brien's not there, that's, that is very true. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, right. This organ is it, this uh, iteration of the this regime, Texans yeah. seems uh, very calculated in how they go about doing things. Um, so, you know, you can't really love this ecosystem for Houston. Dig- Diggs kind of brings this diva energy to a locker room that seems to be pretty mm-hmm. cohesive, right? I mean, you must have thought that, all right, well, maybe they feel that they can bring him in because this is, a, at least I get the feeling that this is a pretty strong locker room and they can handle it with the leadership starting from the head coach kind of down, right? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, it just, he wouldn't be a guy on a team trending up like that that I would want in in there because it just seems like when things are good things are fine you get the honeymoon phase and then it, it goes south and it just seems like they don't didn't seem like they really had those type of guys on that roster mm-hmm. uh in that first year of really blossoming with with cj stroud so um, they must feel pretty good that they can keep that kind of contained it seems like they have basically a they, they're going to pay digs this year but i think there's a zero dead cap hit uh moving into next year if they want to get off of them yeah uh, so they, they're kind of playing with house money here they got the rookie deal uh, with Stroud, you you mentioned in the pre-show that you know, but they have spent some money. So, you know, th- this is what that allows you to do: allows you to spend some money uh, with the with the rookie contract here. Uh, as far as the fallout, I guess we can kind of look at both sides, uh, and we can start on the Houston side of things. You know, you have Nico Tank Diggs, and then Schultz. Mm-hmm. Um, so there has to be at least an odd man out in the receiver room, right? You had. Last season, the Texans were the 10th lowest rate of 11 personnel, sticking with more of that Shanahan 21 personnel style, 21.9% of plays that ranked fourth overall. Now, to kind of combat that a little bit, Stroud was, I believe, seventh overall in wide receiver targets at 63.5%, 317 wide receiver targets. That was good for 10th most in the league. And that was from the 33rd team, uh, Dan Pizzuta, I believe was his name. So targeting the wide receivers a good bit when, when they're out there. But you would think that this signals that we're going to have a, a little bit switch in how we're going to run things. You know, you're not you can't be I don't think you can be that heavy. You can't be the fourth team in 21 personnel when you're bringing in Stefan Diggs because you have Nico Collins, who ha- had a great breakout last year and is great. And, and, and you had Tank Dell, who was on his way to having a huge breakout. And now you add Stefan Diggs. Um You know, so what kind of gives here? Who's going to move around? How are they going to transition into this a little bit more 21 personnel? Because Sloak is a is a Niners uh, disciple. So that how they were playing, it would kind of make sense. Uh, But, you know, those guys also have ties to um, some McVay kind of stuff. And, and, you know, I think think there's a smart enough coordinator to be, hey, we can transition to a little bit more of running it would seem like you have to run a lot more of 11 personnel. Now uh, the logical explanation is tank Dell moves to the slot, right? Mm -hmm. Um, His college slot percentage was 67%, 50%, 6.5% one year, uh, and then 57% the other year. So a lot of slot usage uh, for um, tank Dell 
at that particular juncture. Uh, but last year you, you had Nico 19.5% in the slot and tank Dell 28% in the slot. The rest of that was taken up by Robert Woods and Mechie uh, for the most part. So you have to think those guys, maybe one of them even may get, get cut or released potentially. Right. I can't imagine he's Houston goes back to the well here in the draft this year, right. um, but it's interesting. So what are your thoughts here? Is there a buy? To me, I guess the, the the easy answer is Tank Dell would be the buy if there's any window open of saying, "Hey, this is too crowded." I, I you know, I don't even as great as Stroud is and can be, and and we've seen and we think at least, um, you know, there almost has to be an odd man out from elite production from three guys, right? Right. As far as the tight end room, and it would it would seem. Uh, like at least Tank Dell is the youngest, uh, so that would be for me the easy answer of saying that that would be the the, the kind of buy there, right? Immediate mm-hmm. rookie breakout. Um, right. So what what are your thoughts here? Injury at the end. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that Tank makes a lot of sense. I think Joe Mixon is a buy for me right now. I feel like the the way that that offense is going to open up the run game is going to be you know tremendous. <laughs> um, I feel like you know I still think. You know, especially since he signed that extension contract there, I feel like he's a he shouldn't cost too much with all the wide receiver, you know, parade. Uh, you know, the Texans have already won the Super Bowl, according to many people, um, right. you know, but 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 I think Mixon and, and Dell are, are buys. I think Nico is a long term buy. I, you know, you kind of laid out that Dick's contract. I don't I mean, I don't know how it's going to work out for for him next year or, or, and even if he is there next year, that the year after, you know, age, all the, all those other things that go into it, paying somebody, um, you know, I think back to like, it, well, I guess we'll stay, stay with the Texans. I don't want to talk about the bills quite yet. Cause we haven't got there, but, but I, I, I mean, uh, the, uh, the obvious winner of the, of the whole, um, uh, besides the Texan fan base is, is Stroud, right? Like, but now yeah. Stroud oh, is sure. like, I was just talking, I can't remember if we were talking or if I was talking to somebody else, it was like, man, I was, I was doing redoing my QB rankings a little bit pre, you know, pre draft, pre NFL draft. And a little bit after most of the free agent stuff had hit. And I'm like, man, I am just so low on Stroud comparison to, to market. Right. I had him like mm-hmm. QB eight, which is a low, Still low, right. But yeah. Low, but for not, mar- yeah. It, low for the market. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, man, like, I, you know, passing court, like um, Burrow, Herbert, they don't necessarily get up into my top, top tier just because they don't have that running gear. Right. I'm, mm-hmm. it, I evaluate from a fantasy perspective, not from a talent perspective. And so, but now, I mean, at this point, man, it's like, I don't, I don't know what this does to Stroud's value outside of just, you know, just shoot it to the moon and it's going to go past the moon and go into the stars and, you know, it's yeah. heading out to the milky gal- uh, galaxy at this point, but uh, a lot of, a lot of chatter of who, you know, who's above Stroud. Is it, is it Herbert Allen and then Stroud and which, uh, you know, some people already have them at four or five. Like you said, you, you're a little lower. I, I'm, I, I probably have them floating somewhere in that six, seven range, just cause mm-hmm. you know, I'd like to see you do it one more time before I'm, which could make you late to the party, but it also could safeguard you a little bit from, you know, going all in on, on one time, I think I saw enough to say that it wasn't a, you know, a fluke uh, by any means. I think I think he's got it. It seems right. it seems that way. Um, but you know, you're, you're adding digs for a year. It's it's going to be. I think it's good for Stroud. Is it? Does it open up a window to kind of maybe sell Stroud for? It, it, like, yeah. Would you? Would, is this a? And I don't. I'm not advocating really to sell Stroud. I think this is just the conversation that you can have. Is is maybe that the door even cracked open to get a little extra value on Stroud and what can it, you know, maybe somebody's down on Josh Allen on the Buffalo side of this thing a little bit. And mm-hmm. they CJ Stroud is, is the up and coming thing. Could, is there, is there now a chance to open that door and swap those quarterbacks and be pretty close to even without having to pay a whole lot more? Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think so. I mean, I think there's a, there's an opportunity now with Allen and, and the, the uncertainty of what's what's going to happen there and yada, yada. You know, I also think because Herbert lost all of his his big, um, big weapons this offseason, you know, there could be an opportunity there where I still have Stroud and, and Herbert in the in the same tier for me. So so even with Herbert, you know, uh, obviously this next year it may, may not perform well, but but just uh, from a dynasty outlook, from a three to four year window perspective, I still think Herbert can can score in the, in Harbaugh's offense. And so there, there, there's definitely some, some trade outs, um, same tier trade. Well, I would same tier to most people, but you know, 
tier up for me. Like, you mm-hmm. know, like, can I go get Lamar now? Like with, with Stroud, like I've, yeah. I, you know, I personally would love to do something like that because you're getting the extra juice, right? You're going to get, I, I don't know what those look like. I haven't, I haven't tried to do that. I haven't sure. seen market value on there, but I mean, you, you can catch the, the right, uh, you know, if we are birds in the air, man, you could catch that right, right, uh, a wavelength. And just, yeah. And, yeah, just wind and just ride it because there's uh, the 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 gall is coming. Okay, that's enough wind jokes. I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop. We're going we're going deep. But I mean, I, I the only thing that's a bummer for me with Houston is I'm just not a huge slow it guy. Like I, mm. I I think that he left a lot on the table. I think Stroud made him look a little better personally. Um, just kind of I was rewatching some. Yeah, he, well, you know, he never. That's his first time calling plays. Yeah, I mean, was... yeah, yeah. And he started on the defensive side of the ball, you know, until he went to 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 mm-hmm. San Fran and and started to to learn. So I think it'll be really interesting for me um, from a fantasy, but also just from a real football perspective, is to see how slow it adapts to this just arsenal of awesomeness. Mm-hmm. That you know, maybe that should be their slogan: is we're the arsenal of awesomeness. Because yeah, you know, there it's I don't know. It's it's really hard for me to see. Um, it, it's really hard to see a a. A, a path where the Texans struggle, especially when you lay out the division, you lay out a lot of, lot of, lot of pieces there. It's, it's really hard to see a path where they're going to struggle on offense. And, and, you know, you flip it over to the other side of the ball and I know this is a fantasy show, so we don't talk defense often, but I mean, the, their, their defense wasn't, too shabby you know what i no, mean like they're no, not at all. they're they're able to control that ball and that's part of the other reason why i go back to mixon is like you know if if they hold you know if they have a, a pretty decent defense and they and they start holding people i mean that could that could hamper the top floor for stroud and and you know lean heavy on the run game to run the clock out so there's that yeah. that's kind of where the logic comes where where the bylaws for me would be tank and and mixon and Bummer for Schultz in ways because I feel like, you know, I, I think he'll get higher quality value targets because of the wide receiver core and how how the defenses are going to have to cover uh, all that personnel. But um, but I definitely think from a volume perspective, which is kind of what you played with Schultz is, uh, you mm-hmm. know, that that's that, that that's that's a bummer. But oh, um, <laughs> a little bit for sure. I think that's the natural thing is you point to the Schultz side of thing and go, you know, definitely a bit of a bummer. Uh, for for Schultz there, I, I I big advocate of Schultz. Got Schultz in a lot of places. I traded for Schultz at the FFP trade deadline, FFPC trade deadline. Um, you know, and things like this happen. Uh, you know, he signed a deal. He kind of was growing with CJ Stroud at the end of the, this last season. I think in some ways, you know, I, I saw all over Twitter today that he's dead. There's nothing you want with him, and this is certainly a bummer for him. But you know, it could turn into being like. Oh, well, you know, they traded for Diggs and Diggs is unhappy because he's not getting fed the ball like he's getting fed. And and, and Schultz is just soaking up easy underneath targets. Take, and, and it's not going to be every game. And there's not a lot of whole whole lot of tight ends that every single game they're just getting fed. But yeah. uh, it should be easy pickings for touchdowns for Schultz exactly. in yeah. bad games. And, it, and I think I think there's going to be a lot of easy completions over the middle for Schultz yep. uh, with just that arsenal of guys. Uh, so. I think you gotta you gotta temper expectations of saying a bummer and a little bit of Schultz, but some people were saying like just dead in fantasy, and I just anything can like the shit that people say those kind of things. Like anybody who's saying he's completely dead and and like stop listening to those people. Like they're yeah. they're they're saying it for effect. I know, uh, but like that's just crazy. Like week two, you know, Nico Collins could be hurt, Diggs could be hurt. Tank could be hurt. I mean, Schultz could be hurt too, but I mean, anything can happen. Or the first two weeks, it's been, hey, all these other guys are doing, hey, the, the, and I think the Texans will be a one of the higher echelon scoring offenses mm-hmm. in the league from, you know, going from year one to year two. And now we've got a full arsenal of, right. of really good players. Plus, you know, Mixon, I think, is a great call of, of being a great benefit. Same kind of vein of Mixon. I think you can plug Schultz into that logic a little bit. And he's still, it's not like he, you were drafting him in the fifth round. You were, he was a double digit draft player and even in tight end premium a lot of the times. Right. So not a whole lot of sunk cost there. And I, I still think there can, there's some optimism from me there. And then maybe some of that's just saying take lock. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm also not somebody who just jumps to the extreme the other way. Uh, I want to double back on digs a little because you know, for us, we've been seeing him go in the seventh-ish round in our ADP. Yeah, 
probably even drops the needle maybe a little further with Diggs because I don't. Yeah. There's no chance that he's the hog that that he he may be some games. It might be a rotation of of who mm-hmm. it is. Um, and you know, is it is 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 it Tank Dell for the same reasons that we were just talking about Schultz? That's really the hugest beneficiary. He's the youngest, and it would seem like you're forcing him to the slot. No, nobody can press on him like he. You know, he's super speedy, super quick, and the release. And on top of that, like maybe can take can can kind of manage himself into better situations to not take as many hits. If does that mm-hmm. if that makes sense, or yep. maybe maybe you would say logic that into saying that he could take more hits. But I I could see how you could leverage him into positions where hey I can get out of bounds a little easier. Hey I can I can scheme myself into these positions where I can grab it, run, and and protect myself maybe a little more than, than being on the outside, at least from being a, like Nico on the outside, it feels like he can protect himself with that sideline and, and doing, and being that bigger bodied guy feels like this is almost a more natural position for, for tank Dell. So I think I like everything with tank Dell. And, and I think there's probably a buy window for Nico here too. Everybody's going to be uh, down on these guys, but Diggs for me is, you know, the, what that one, the, I don't know, I guess, <laughs> Were the Bills being spiteful? Is there a no trade? Well, I can't imagine there was a no trade there where they were like, "Hey, you go here with three with two other dudes who are awesome." You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't really know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but I, I mean, I, I feel like I feel like that wide receiver room is now the if this was redraft, just wait to whoever's last. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Like right. just that's that's the value at this point is you know <laughs> absolutely um, to, to to look for. I mean, it, it, like you said, I think it's going to be a rotational. I don't think Schultz is dead either. I think you know I think the quantity of targets is going to go down. So like in a two point tight end premium league, you know he may have taken some a bigger hit than a non tight end premium or half point or you know. Um, mm-hmm. That kind of thing, but it, but I think that the quality of targets can go up, like you were saying, like the the scheme and the way you know who knows where the touchdowns are going to go. That's that's a big big factor. That's also part of the reason why I'm high on Mixon because you know you, who knows what that offense is going to really look like once they're actually all all on the field. I, I will say that Stroud is probably one of the few quarterbacks that I feel good about distributing the ball like i feel like he's even as a rookie or a second year dude like he's he's got the he's got the look no he's got that um you know that 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 ability to kind of feed you know um right all over the field and and then you know didn't see terribly locked on to one guy per se week in week out Um, right so yeah, I, I feel you on that, and I, I think he's he's good enough to facilitate that. And I do think they're going to be scoring points at a, at a heavy clip. And the, and the defense, I, I, they've added great pass rusher. They they lost. Um, I'm drawing a blank on what the guy's name that they lost who was really good. Grenard maybe or something like that. They brought in Danelle Hunter, and and there was another pass rusher that they big big name pass rusher. I think that, right. that they're that I'm drawing a blank on right now. But uh, let's switch to the the Bill side of things because well, just real quick. So I think okay. the moral of the story for me with the Texans is floor way up, ceiling way down. Like that's that's kind of how I'm looking at him at this point. Makes, yeah, yeah, that makes yeah. that makes some sense. And and big winner obviously Stroud, but. There, there might be a window to maybe go to the the upper echelon there. If, if, and it's maybe that is maybe it is the upper echelon, so you don't want to. And again, not advocating to, but could be interesting that you, there, there's a probably a high end move to be made there now with with Stroud with being the big winner there. So flipping to the other side, we talked about a little bit Josh Allen. Uh, maybe maybe there's some people who are worried about the situation over there and and uh, that they that they don't have digs now and it's Curtis Samuel and I, I think their roster currently is Curtis Samuel. Uh, Shakir, Mac mm-hmm. Hollins, and Justin Shorter. I think they have Andy Isabel, uh, or Andy Isabella, and uh, uh, KJ Hamler. I think I think all those are the guys on their mm-hmm. roster currently. And then obviously Kincaid and uh, Knox. So you would almost have to almost guarantee. Now I wouldn't wonder where the DraftKings odds are of a you know what the wide receivers that are going to get drafted at twenty eight to. Uh, Buffalo at this point, so I think you could pretty much mark that one in. Uh, that that and shit, they maybe maybe well they got a lot of holes. So I, but I would almost guarantee that at twenty eight you get a wide receiver at this point uh, for mm-hmm. them. Whether that's uh, you know who knows and uh, who it would be, um, but it could be Ad Mitchell. Um, you know, remember Keon Coleman 
NFL circles was kind of that first rounder. So, you know, don't, you know, don't be shocked if maybe something along those lines kind of goes there. Don't maybe they, maybe they trade back out of the first and, and move back a little bit and try to move some picks up and they get one of those second round receivers because there is a lot. So a lot of options uh, for them uh, to do some different things here, but uh, Curtis Samuel, you know, you would think, like I said, they're bringing somebody else in. So he's not going to be your wide receiver one uh, per se, but right. You know, you'd like to be able to say, hey, you, you caught a little sell high window here f- for them. But I don't know that anybody's really necessarily falling for that. What you could get is Curtis Samuel being a little more attractive in a package right now. Right. Yeah, he's he's cilantro right now. I think, you know, he's that he's that toppy that makes the dish look look really good. Right. right. I don't think him on it. I don't you know, what is it you you can either buy cilantro, you can either have no cilantro or you can have enough to make, you know, for a quinceanero or whatever that, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, that meme is. But, yeah. but he, he's he's kind of the he's 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 the the toppings that's going to get a deal done that probably two days ago would have not moved the needle. And now I think it would. So, right. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree. I mean, I, you know, maybe maybe you could get the late two for one of these mm-hmm. bills or the Shakir or the Curtis Samuel if somebody really likes him. I saw Plenty of people today also saying, "Don't Shakir's not going to happen. It's not happening." Mm-hmm. So it's like, why? Why? Like Shakir, look, the same people that said Diggs is never going to get traded. You know, right. Well, yeah. Every, every year people, we say this, and right? Not going to get traded. <laughs> so definitively yeah. talk about things, and it's like, I mean, I thought Shakir was much better in in this last year, and and you know he was kind of up and down. He would show some good stuff, and then have some boneheaded plays, mm-hmm. um, but. You know, he had a, yeah. he had a 15 point game, a 16 point game, a 20 point game. And in the playoffs, he was three for three, 31 yards and a touchdown and uh, nine targets, seven receptions, 44 yards and a touchdown. I mean, mm-hmm. if I can get like Shakir is so cheap and I, I thought started to show and, and show Josh Allen was starting to show a little trust with him. So he's had some decent games throughout and been kind of figuring things out and learning a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I think he's, he's a fun player to have on your roster. I mean, I wouldn't go crazy doing any trades for him, but again, probably a sweetener and a deal. If you wanted to make it, um, you know, kind of one way or the other, I wouldn't be neither him or Curtis Samuel would be guys that I go and, you know, go after, you know, by themselves. They'd be, if I wanted to acquire them, they'd be a piece in a deal, uh, as right. well. So e- either side of that, that's the kind of way that I look at those guys, um, Obviously, Kincaid, um, you know, you could you could call this a sell high window for him, too. Uh, but those people who want to sell high are the same people who told you to buy uh, this offseason, which it probably isn't happening for you. The yeah. same people who tell you to never draft a tight end in round one. It probably ain't happened. If he just came off of, you know, 70 reception year, 73 receptions, and it was a bad year, you know, uh, and Diggs was there, uh, you mm-hmm. know, a, a dominant, already known alpha number one. Uh, kind of guy so it seems like this is setting up for a little bit maybe fundamental shift in how they're gonna there seems like yak kind of guys are being maybe a little more prioritized and and kind of what they're doing yeah um and we'll see what they get to be their their next alpha one uh but you know i don't they the, the bills were fine down the stretch with Diggs kind of not with Diggs kind of struggling right you know they, they they it wasn't like oh my god where where's Stefan Diggs and he's it's costing us games like the bills yeah. were fine down the stretch and and fine in the playoffs um Diggs even you know had some bigger drops in that Kansas City game where you know they he got open and hit him and yeah did he have to slow down a little bit but still should have caught it so right um i think the bills are going to be just fine with even the bigger worry is potentially some of those you lost a lot of players on defense we'll mm-hmm. see how they kind of reload there uh, but i know nobody cares well, i think about it was that. also smart for them to take that 25 second instead of the 24 second because they already were loaded at the draft in this this particular draft list i think they had i don't remember off the top of my head but i i think it was like eight or nine 10 picks or something. I, they, they had quite a few picks um, basically for the 24, the 24 draft. And I, I do think it's a change in philosophy kind of piggybacking on what you were saying there. I think that they've, I think that they've seen now what, what is working in the AFC and, and what isn't working. And, and I think that um, there was no hidden uh, agenda that they were going to try to re-extend digs or they're going to, you know, he was going, he was on his way out of Buffalo just from the, 
the, the way that it seemed from the outside, but also from the inside. And so I think that it makes sense to just get something for them and, and see what happens this year. I think they yeah. have, they, you, you said it, Kincaid, they have Dawson Knox still, which I know Knox is dead because of Kincaid, but, but from a football perspective, they love Knox, right? You know, yeah. they, they might do a, I think I put it in the discord. They might do an NBA jams rule, you know, where they just have two <laughs> tight ends running down the field on both sides, you know, uh, uh, lighten it up or something, but um, opposite direction of Houston, you know, Houston's yeah. maybe gearing up to go a little more uh, three wide receiver, maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know what, maybe they were already there, uh, but go, maybe gearing up to go a little more 21 with Buffalo. And I don't have those numbers in front of me. So don't you know, get at me in the comments and let me know uh, yeah. whether that was going on, but you know, Knox, a decent player in his own right but like you said not not really the most fantasy viable guy but was was kind of that mold of that early mold of transitioning of those kind of wide receiver-esque tight ends Knox yeah. kind of was that a little right. bit mm-hmm. um didn't quite pan out that way but they liked him brought him back and then they drafted Kincaid so you know we moving forward you know we could be looking at AD Mitchell and Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir being being your starting three, and if that's the case, I, you know I like I like what Curtis Samuel could do with this offense. And you get rid of a, but you know I feel like Josh Allen seemingly at least in public was constantly going to bat for Stephon Diggs, even though he may not have wanted to because he kind of seems like you know a little bit of a, a shithade uh, behind closed doors where it's like you're managing this grown fucking man, like yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? He's a wide receiver, man. It's yeah. All about the yeah. big play and getting the spotlight. So it's right. I mean, I feel I, I think the, the person that's one of the biggest losers is Gabe Davis. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he right. spent, spent all those seasons there and then under the shadow of Diggs. And Diggs leaves <laughs> I didn't think about you know, that. Son of a bitch, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, son of a biscuit. Sorry. This is uh, this is on the tubes. But um, I, you know, I, 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 I'm not too worried about, like you said, I'm not too worried about um, Buffalo. I, 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 I guess I have a hate for offensive coordinators lately, but Joe Brady isn't one of my favorites, mm. but he's also not a horrible offensive coordinator. So I, I definitely think that they can, they can kind of retool and, and go in a different direction strategy wise. I think the NFL is changing strategy wise. Like just, you know, as, as we talk about tank Dell and we talk about these different players, there's just, there's the player pool, I think is opening more for, for different ways to construct your team and the hip, hip drop tackle is is going to be interesting to see what that that effect has on it so there's just so many variables and so much stuff that's up in the air that i think like um uh if if you're going to transition out if you're not going to get you know this isn't the philly um tech uh, titans deal right aj brown bringing right. in tank dell as a replacement they're, they're not doing it that way um they're, you know, they're they're going to replace obviously Diggs, but I think it's going to be by committee. It's not going to be by right. alpha, and and uh, I I I think they're going to be just fine. I think Allen would be uh, Allen's always a buy for me, you know, no matter <laughs> no matter what. But um, sure. but I, if there's a even a hint that you can go and get him now, I would definitely go do that. Um, I think you know James Cook is. You know the the running game should have some some running game and check here. downs should mm-hmm. be a little slight upgrade, right? Yep. I think I think by committee is a good way to put that. Um, yeah, which I think that we saw that shift a little bit, right? With yeah. at the end of the season, right? Well, that's how they were winning. And it worked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that's they kind of changed and spread it out a little bit more, and they 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 were you know I don't know felt like they were a lot more effective. I, I don't have the 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 metrics on it, so I don't yeah. I don't know that for sure. But my by that tells me that that's that it was and I think my gut's pretty seemed, big so from what i recall it was right. like somewhat of a wash some things got better some things got worse um I, I don't like i don't have them in front of me either but uh to the draft picks real quick they have 10 they have 10 draft picks they have a first a second two fourths three fifths two six and a seventh um yeah so they do have a lot of picks nothing in the third uh, but you know they get, they, but they've that, got ammo to move up to the third if they need to. It's a it's a deeper class in lots of positions and some of the positions that they need. Um, uh, that that fifth round, you know, they, you know, I mean, there's there's enough wide receivers in this class that some some are going to drop down that probably are fourth round grades or third round grades that are probably going to drop into the fifth just because of how much talent there is at the wide receiver um, position this this year. So. Um, and I don't so they're going to have enough shots, I think, is what I'm trying to say. From this page that I'm looking at here, it doesn't look like that's updated with the picks that they that they did get a couple 2024s. And they got a 24, from what I was reading earlier, 2024 six-rounder 
uh, in there as well. So I don't know if that had that in there either. So they might have 11 picks now. Um, so a lot of, a lot of good stuff in there. You got anything else before we get out of here? Close up shop. No, nope. I think, uh, I think that's it. I think we covered the, the exciting news of the off season. Well, no, yeah. no, the, of this week of, of draft month, yeah. this is draft so, month. The first week of draft month is off to a, 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 a <laughs> nice rumbling start. start. We're going. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So we, uh, we appreciate you. This probably won't come out quite on Thursday cause we're recording this Wednesday night. Uh, probably, but maybe you'll see this Friday. So, I'm sure some more time will take place. And <laughs> there we go. A little Texans hat, um, an OG Texans guy. Um, a little time will take place and some, some other takes will, will arise in our thoughts and we'll, we'll keep you abreast of those as we, as we kind of move forward, but fun little trade there. So appreciate you guys. Uh, keep tuning in, like, subscribe, comment below. We'll, we're we're going to keep you locked and loaded to the draft. And then we got a lot of fun stuff after the draft. So uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace.